You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I'm Coach Jen from Ocala, Florida. And I'm Karen Chatton from Gardnerville, Nevada. And you are listening to Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for May 14th, episode 3431. Good morning, horse world. When your start time's on Saturday and your finish time's on Sunday, and it doesn't get much better than best conditioned, and completing the challenge is the challenge, you're an endurance rider. Welcome back, Karen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Tuesday. Current weather here in Florida is raining cats and dogs. What have you got going up over there in Nevada? Oh, we've got sunshiny weather. It's really nice, but we did have a really good thunder boomer storm last night. So I have muddy horses. Yeah, muddy horses. <laughs> We're we're kind of wel- welcoming the rain a little bit here in Ocala, Florida, because we've had an unusually dry spring thus far, locally where uh-huh. we are. So the grass is all looking a little bit sad. Oh, so okay. All, yeah, so we're cheering yeah, we're, the rain on a bit. Yeah, we're finally just really getting into a little bit of warmer temperatures this week. Finally. <laughs> finally. And, <laughs> and so, my, I mean, my horses are shedding out. So they're still shedding out. They've still got a ways to go. So, yeah, ours are. Ours look shed out. They're at that stage in their shedding where you look at them and go, oh, they look great. They're all shiny and smooth, but there's still a (laughs) lot of hair coming out. (laughs) Yes. Dogs, horses, there's hair everywhere. (laughs) Yes, hair. And, you know, Mother Nature does that on purpose because that's what, that's how all of the local birds get a fully carpeted nest. That's true. Yes. I've donated quite a bit of. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, when you find a nest that's blown out of a tree somewhere and it's all lined and you can see which horse it was. It's, I love that. <laughs> oh, that's from, that's from Jojo. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, this is the part of the show where we always, oh, let's tell everybody what we're going to do on today's, today's show. We're going to be talking about the green bean program and what else today? Um, well, we're going to talk to a, a fitness coach about the benefits of stretching and working out and staying in shape as a rider and how that benefits our horses. And then we're also going to talk with somebody about the Northeast uh, Endurance Team Challenge, which is a big event that they have coming up next month. Woohoo! So lots going on. If you're not an endurance rider, fear not. We talk about a lot of things on this year's show that apply to everybody who's interested in horses. For example, staying fit. That applies to all all kinds of riders, not just endurance riders. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And as many of you know, endurance riders have some of the best adventures. So we're going to catch up on Karen's adventures from the past month since you joined us last. What have you been up to? Okay, well, I did go do a 50 in April at the uh, NASTAR Nevada Derby ride in Fort Churchill. And Jovi has finally awoken his inner beast and realizes exactly what his job is in life. (laughs) And uh, he's no longer the laid back horse that I can ride in a halter on a loose rein. Oh, no! (laughs) So, so, uh, he, he, yeah, I mean, he's still pretty good, but he loves to go, go, go. And so he's um, turning into what he was you know, bred to do was to be an endurance horse. And so we've been having a pretty good time going down the trails together. He's a blast. And so I'm just loving this horse. We're having so much fun together. I had to cancel from a ride earlier in May because it ended up raining and it turned into a muddy mess. And I had done that ride once before in the mud. And it was like, I, I was not going to do that again. So I didn't go to that one, but I have another one planned for this next Saturday where I'm going to take Jovi to go and do the 50. And then I've got uh, more stuff coming up. And I found out this week, I won an entry to the 
have this educational ride. So I may be going and doing that. And uh, so that'll give Jovi um, 50 miles of experience on the actual Tevis Trail. And I've also entered, I've got all three of my horses entered in virtual rides. Uh, The two young ones are both entered in the virtual Tevis, which means I have to basically do 100 miles in 100 days on each of them. So uh, it's keeping me on my toes. And I've entered Jovi in the Old Dominion one, which is a 205-mile Holy moly! But I have till October. It's from April 19th to October 19th. And I and I know we'll get it done because I'm planning on doing like at least 150 a month with him. So even with that, with the conditioning and training rides, that shouldn't be a problem. The issue is keeping the other two. So basically, if I'm alternating the other two, I need to do at least two miles like every day. <laughs> For 100 days. Wow. <laughs> so, and if I miss a day or miss two days, I got to double that. <laughs> yeah. So wow. I'm starting, I'm starting to think, well, what was I thinking? What were you thinking? Oh, my goodness. You went a little crazy at the buffet, didn't you? I kind of did, yes. <laughs> and so, but it's all good experience. Uh, you know, it's getting the young ones out, um, getting them around the neighborhood so they can see all the stuff that's going on. And so it's all good. And, and it all supports good causes with the trails mm-hmm. and the organizations and stuff. So uh, there you go. <laughs> well, I know. I know with the with the virtual Tevis, they have it set up so that you get all kinds of neat award. I'm going to use my air quotes awards. They're virtual awards. You get a little sticker that you can you can post on your page and stuff like that. Do they do that sort of thing for the Old Dominion one as well? Yeah, I've been. I've only made it on the Old Dominion because I haven't updated my miles for the last week. But I made it to like the 18 mile vet check and so they send you they did send me something with pictures and a description and the history of the area and all that kind of stuff Cool. so that's kind of cool because as I go I'll get to learn more about those rides that are on the opposite coast from me that I would know about otherwise so right right kind of fun that way yeah cool. well that's a lot of fun again adventures for <laughs> endurance riders. And it's really, I love that they're doing this because not everybody can do a Tevis ride or an Old Dominion ride, which are the, some of the toughest rides in America. And they're really long, but you get to enjoy the camaraderie because it's very, it's very interactive. You get to enjoy the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. You get to know a little bit about the trails themselves. So I love that they do these virtual rides. because I, If I remember right, they started during COVID, didn't they? Probably, or just, I think the virtual Tevis might have started one year or two years before COVID. Mm-hmm. As a, as a gosh, fundraiser, yeah. Yeah, they've got, I mean, hundreds and, like, my bib numbers on my two horses are, like, 918. Wow. So, they've got a ton of entries of That's people so cool. doing it. And, uh, you know, and it's... It, it, you know, if you've got a horse that you're riding longer conditioning rides, getting 100 miles in is no big deal. Right. But like with my youngsters, like the four-year-old, um, I've basically, I have ridden them once with a tack on um, for 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So he's got a whole half a mile of being <laughs> ridden. The rest of our miles are hand walking. <laughs> and you, and that's the neat part about these rides is they usually have those kinds of options to really open up who can participate. Right. It, exactly. And it's versatile. You can do it. Um, I know like the, the one, the back East one, you can do it as ride and tie partners. Oh, do you, now have or, you ever, have you ever done a ride and tie? Yes, I did. I did a ride and tie last year. Oh, on, wow. With Jovi. And um, I met my partner. We met halfway because um, she lives over in California. And so I would trailer over and, at, at the base of a mountain. And once a week, we would meet up and run up the mountain and run down the mountain with 
You things. and you say you say that so casually. I drive from Nevada to California, meet at the base of the mountain, and run up and run down. That that's the way some people talk about going to the grocery store, Karen. <laughs> yes, and then when we went and did the ride. It rained the whole day, so <gasps> oh. we were soaking wet, running in squishy shoes, because, you know, I wore my running shoes rather than riding boots, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, yeah, and so we, but we had a blast, it, and it was great experience for the horse, you know, to get tied up at, on, to a tree while other horses are passing. <laughs> oh, I cannot imagine. I just cannot imagine any of my horses. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. Yes. Wow. So it's like all good experience for them. It develops their brain and, you know, but at that point I, I had been doing, I've been doing parades on the horse and taking him to different, all different kinds of events and as many things as I can. So, you know, the one thing he hasn't really done yet is trails like what we're going to have on the Tevis Ed ride where we're going on narrow canyons with cliffs and drop-offs. Yeah, that's going to be slightly Broke terrifying. Away. Yeah. So and what? Like, what? I what is? See that word. <laughs> what's the edu? How, how does the educational ride differ from the regular ride? What's What's that about? Okay. So what we do, we we have a camp, base camp, and then um, one of the days they they're going to trailer us into Robinson Flat, which is going to be you know it's a long windy ride trailer ride to get down in there and then from there we're going to ride 30 some miles back to where we're camped but those miles are including the canyons where you're doing it's a lot of switchbacks mm -hmm. up and downhill mm -hmm. um you've got the swinging bridge to cross you know lots of stuff like that uh, and then another day we ride from camp further up the trail and then from there, we get trailered back to camp. And then one night, there's a five-mile um, night ride in the dark where we ride to Michigan Bluff, I think it is, and have ice cream. <laughs> so that's really neat. So they really give you a variety of experience, what it's like to ride in um, backcountry terrain in the dark, what it's like to ride in backcountry, the different types of terrain. That's a really great idea. And it's going to be very appealing emotionally. People are going to want to sign up because, hello, it's part of the, the Tevis ride. Right, right. Versus just having it in some random place. You know? Right. And they also do, um, they've got a, a lot of people giving little like seminars and stuff going over a lot of the education and the things you need to know mm -hmm. if you're planning on doing Tavis. They say that the people that complete the educational ride have a greater chance of completing Tavis. Well, there you go. Yeah, well, so, education is your right. is uh, power, right? It is, you know, and I just think giving the horses the experience on that kind of type of trail is always beneficial. I know, like, every year I've done Tavis, um, in the first like seven or eight miles, there there's a series of footbridges that are wooden and they're like two feet wide or so. But you're go you're going through it in the dark because we start so early. Every single time I've had horses in front of me stop and refuse to go across those bridges. Yeah. And so, and these are all pretty, you know, a lot of experienced horses but they just haven't encountered a narrow not everybody has a narrow park. wooden footbridge in their area <laughs> i know and so i was always lucky with Bo. he would just sort of dip around whatever horse was refusing and go right on across and then the horse that was refusing would kind of back up the whole ride behind me so i would get in a nice little bubble with nobody behind me like that yeah. happened so many times yeah. um so there's so many things that you can't always plan on or people aren't always aware. So, you know, just going out and getting as much experience as you can is really good. And that's how I feel with Jovi. It's like, this is just one more thing on his, you know, educational journey as he's coming along. I mean, cause to me, he's still a very green endurance horse. He's done, five AERC rides and two of them were fifties. So to me, he's still just beginning, mm -hmm. you know, he's still new. He still has so much to learn. He's already learned a lot 
I mean, don't get me wrong. It's just that I still feel like um, even though I'm experienced doing that kind of trail, he, my horse isn't. So that makes me, to me, I feel like I'm starting over too. Well, each horse has a different training path they're going to take. Just because you've, yeah. you, you, cause, because mm-hmm. you've taken other horses from greenies up through the levels up to the you know, the highest levels, but each horse's path getting there is a little bit different. So as you go along, things are, well, you, Bo did this route and Bo did these four things and had to struggle with this and found that easy. Jovi's might not be the same. Yeah. Right. And and you forget all the stuff you did to train a horse 20 years ago. You know, <laughs> yeah. when, yeah. when I was Starting with my other, my last horses, you know, you just, you forget how much time and work went into things. You just remember riding them the last 10 or 15 years where they were, they were made well broke and, and bomb proof and that sort of thing. And Jovi's getting there. We did have an encounter the other day with the neighbor's pig. And for some reason, Jovi he is more afraid of this pig than he is of a bear. This pig terrorizes him. He can smell it, and it's only two houses up from me on the corner. And as we approach the intersection where the pig is on, and the pig is named Sheldon, and he's free roaming. He, he's not fenced in. He just roams around the property. He never leaves it. Um, but there was Sheldon right there at the corner. And Jovi, luckily I wasn't on him. I was leading him because I know about the horse and the pig phobia. And Jovi freaked out. And he spun around all four feet, went out from under him, and he landed hard on his full side, crushed his stirrup. Ow. Uh, Ow. Yeah. I'm just, thank God I wasn't on him because that would have That would have been your leg, yeah. Probably a helicopter ride to the intensive care. Um, And and he got up, and he he was fine. He does have a little bit of road rash on his hip and on his shoulder. And, of course, the stirrup is, you know, rest in peace. It's toast. Um, So, and he's fine. I've ridden him uh, uh, twice since that happened, and and he appears to be fine. And, uh, you know, he's just going to have to go past that house with the pig because it's on the way to the trail. Every day, past the Every pig. Day. Yes. And the yes. hardest part is because the pig is free roaming, you never know where it's going so to be. And Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So, um, but it, he smells it. Even if he can't see it, he smells it. Which so. is probably even, and in my experience, when you have a horse that has that type of phobia, being able to either smell it or hear it, but not see it is even worse for them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, he thinks it's going to come after him. He doesn't know and where it's it, coming from, yeah. And it's funny because this is the horse that likes to lead in a parade. He's Fire totally trucks, no problem. Pig, deathly. Old and confident, <laughs> not afraid of anything. But, you know, and, and he lives next door to two llamas. And... We've got goats and every other kind of animal in this neighborhood, but for some reason, it and I know it's the smell that really sets them off. And and what's really funny is my four year old walks right past the pig and doesn't care at all. <laughs> yeah, and I, I know so many people who have horses with genuine pig phobias like that, where the scent of a of yeah 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 right? the scent of a porcine they're out. There we go. Well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of of phobias, if you're phobic about not being able to get the uh, supplies you need to have a great horse life, you need to chat with the folks with at the distance depot or even better go to the distance depot.com. So why don't we get Kristen on the line? Hey, good morning, Kristen. It's good to hear from you this morning. How are you doing? Uh, Good morning. Doing just fine. Oh, good. (laughs) <laughs> I'm doing great, and I just want to tell you how much I love the new tack I just got from my little gray horse. It just fits in perfectly, and it looks just awesome. I just love it. It does. That, yeah, that red and black is really sharp. It is. I'm glad you like it. 
I'm glad I went with that color. It took me a while to yeah. decide on his colors. You know how that goes. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, yeah. you almost, it, it's like with this biasing tack, because it never wears out. Right. I, I have to get a new yeah, horse a in, order to, in order to justify <laughs> buying more. <laughs> uh-huh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. Great stuff. So tell us what do you want to talk about this morning? Um, well, I thought since we're in springtime, and I don't know about you, but grass is growing like crazy. We're mowing <laughs> like mad over here um, from all the rain we're having. And so I thought we'd talk about the thin line, flexible, silly, slow feed grazing muzzle. That's a big mouthful. But if you don't know about this grazing muzzle, it's amazing. I had one of those old, unfortunately, I had a horse I had to put a grazing muzzle on in New England. I never had to do that. But here in the Midwest, we have that brome and it is just filled with sugar. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I put that old um, black bucket type grazing muzzle on him and he marched himself out to the grass, put his head down and went, I can't eat out of this thing. Stood there. He he looks so pitiful. I said, okay, I can't watch this. So I tried this flexible Philly slow feed grazing muzzle by thin line and it's super soft. It's less, um, it's lightweight, um, very breathable. So he walked right over to the water tank, drank out of the water tank. I mean, just really comfortable. Um, and you can enlarge, there's a little hole in the bottom of course for them. Um, and you can make the hole the size you need it to be. So it starts out little teeny tiny, but you can make it bigger. Of course, it comes in sizes for ponies and horses and warm bloods, drafts, big horses. Um, So you order the size. Um, We have a video which shows you how to attach it to the halter. We actually make a halter out of the beta biothane um, that accommodates the little zip ties in the front, the front portion of the nose, but it can go around any halter. So um, pretty user-friendly, lots of adjustment for, Mm -hmm. for all situations. So it's a great, great product if, if you have a horse that's in the situation of needing a muzzle. Um, and then I thought, since we were talking about these grazing muzzles, I might um, also talk about the Speedy Beat product that we have if people are unfamiliar with it. Most, I think a lot of trail riders and endurance riders feed a beet pulp um, or have fed beet pulp. And most of the time when you buy it in the U.S., of course, it comes in great big bags and it's kind of sandy and it takes, you know, up to 24 hours to soak. And I've heard about horses choking on beet pulp as well Mm because some of the pieces are really big and thick um, and hard to get down sometimes. So this Speedy Beet product soaks in 10 minutes um, very fast. uh, it uh, comes in a 44-pound bag. It, it makes three times the amount. It's more expensive than the U.S. bee pulp you get. Um, this is imported from England. Quick soaking. It has flat flakes, so they're less likely, and it kind of breaks up nicely, so less likely to choke. There's no um, sand, very clean. Um, and oh, good. It soaks so quickly, and, and you can beat it sopping wet or, you know, as wet as you want to. I have a friend who feeds it and her horses basically drink it. <laughs> so great for hydration. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a pretty fabulous product. And believe it or not, we offer a bulk rate um, on shipping because these bags, of course, are heavy. So we offer uh, a discount on the freight for five bags and then 10 bags sometimes cuts the shipping in half. Of course, that depends on where you live and how rural you, your uh-huh. address is. But it really does help in the shipping. Um, and it's a great product and lasts a really long time, one bag. So um, pretty pretty cool product. And it's actually um, a Laminitis Trust app- um, approved feed. So um, they're endorsing this product. So oh, good. it's great for horses. Good. 95% sugar-free, non-GM. So I could go on and on, but it's a great <laughs> product for, for horses, <laughs> um, you know, that might need that um, sugar-free food. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great, great things there. And then there's a fiber beet, too, that has the alfalfa stems in it. So, And we have little um, mashes um, made with the speedy beet in it, too, carrot and apple flavor. Um, and those are great at a hold. You can divide them up and make lots of little meals for your holds um, with tasty apples and carrots in it. So lots of good options there. Okay, good. 
And um, I see you have a hoof supplement. We do. Yes. Well, they used to have formula for feet. Um, and then for whatever reason, I can't remember what happened um, there. But now the new one is called Hoof Essentials. And we have a great price on it. We've lowered the price, which really helps with the shipping. Because, again, it's a 45-pound bag. Um, and it just has great – it also has gut um, – health in it as well. So um, it's a really nice hoof supplement. Um, I loved that formula for feet. And unfortunately, my, my guys are gone. So I haven't tried this product, but we've had lots of good feedback um, from veterinarians and users alike um, that they're finding a, a similar um, benefit as, as the formula for feet that we used to have. Oh, good. And how would so, somebody get can- in t- touch with you? Well, they can um, give us a call toll-free, 866-863-2349, or find us on thedistancedepot.com. Terrific. Thanks, Kristen. And next up, we're going to be speaking with Griffin Keller, who's going to give us an update on the Green Bean Program. For It's a pro program designed for new endurance riders that have fewer than 1,000 career limited distance and endurance miles from the AERC. So welcome, Griffin. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm well. How are you? Good. Well, so give us a little bit of an overview of the Green Bean Program and what it is. I know we've covered this here before a little bit, but it's been a while, and I know we have a lot of listeners that are aspiring endurance writers. Yep, so uh, we were started almost 10 years ago now um, by Deb Mo, who is still involved with us but has miled out herself. Um, and like you said, we're a program for newer endurance riders. Um, <laughs> I say newer because I've actually been involved for all 10 years but haven't miled out yet. <laughs> uh, for people, and we're just, we're here to promote, you know, the endurance organization as well as riding and volunteering we give out not only points for actually completing rides but just volunteering at the rides and you know if you can volunteer to vet check you learn a whole lot in one day so we want to promote the whole sport um, and it it helps people you know, get involved and hopefully stay involved mm-hmm. exactly yeah. and 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 you have a website, greenbeanendurance.org. Is that one of the best places for people to go to learn more? Yep. We have a lot of information on that website, including a sign-up page, which will link to the AARC sign-up page. Um, you have to be a member of AARC as well as Green Bean, so it is an extra fee, but it's only $15 for the season. Um, you can join at any time throughout the year. Uh, we take memberships up through September because it just gets crazy to try and like add new people from September, October, November. Uh-huh. <laughs> Finalizing right. this. And we also have a Facebook group, uh, Green Bean Endurance Challenge, and we put a lot of information there and people can get together and find more people from the area. Uh, we do have a membership list on our website uh, as well. That'll kind of help you connect to people if you want to find someone local. Okay. And how many people are participating so far this year? This year we have 200, just over 200 people uh, signed up and over 20, we've got 24 teams and it crossed all different divisions of mileage and locations. Some people set up their teams within certain locations. Other people are like, Hey, you know, I'm super competitive. You know, let's get a team and try and win that top prize at the end of the year. Oh, wow. Wow. So you have awards and stuff like uh, placings and teams and stuff like that? Yep, we do um, award for end of year points. Um, We have awards for the teams, top place in that, as well as individual, um, either with one horse or multiple horses which uh, this year we're looking at people with riding two or more horses. Um, And we also do random drawings throughout the year. And then the end of year, we have some sponsors that'll uh, give us, you know, some cool stuff to give away. No, that's great. That's really cool. 
So how many writers over the last 10 years have surpassed the thousand mile mark? Do you know? I'm looking it up on our website. So we have 69. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I've got the website in front of me. <laughs> well, that's great. So, so yep. basically, you know, this organization or or whatever you you call it helps encourage and inspire new new people in the sport, and kind of helps them build a camaraderie with other new writers and. Um, on their journey together so they can kind of learn as they all, you know, get get their first thousand miles in the sport. Yep. That's, That's great. Right. That's great. So so it's not too late this year for anybody listening if you want to join. Um, you do, it, it says that you can earn points for non-writing activities like volunteering, mm-hmm. crewing, attending clinics, listening to a webinar. So even if you're not quite ready to jump in and and be writing yet, you can still get your, you know, test the waters out and um, become part of the group and get started. We have lots of opportunities to earn points without actually having to ride a ride. Um, I've had a couple of years of horse issues and only gotten myself points through volunteering. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, but you're still learning. So that's a great experience. It's a good way to, you know, get, get going and learn. And, and really the the sport needs the volunteers or the riders wouldn't be riding. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything else you want to add about the program? Uh, we everybody who is a member of the Green Bean program is also entered in our Tally Ho Mileage Derby, um, which is you can, can track all your conditioning miles, anything ride miles, as well as CTR or anything else you might do on the side, um, and you get five points for every hundred miles completed there as well. So. Oh, good, good, and so that earns your way towards getting uh, higher placements or more awards. Yep, and a patch at the end of the season. (laughs) Okay, good. And again, everybody listening, it's greenbeanendurance.org. And what what was the Facebook group again? Green Bean Endurance Challenge. Okay, great. Well, hey, thanks for joining us again this morning, Griffin. Thank you. As horse owners, we spend a lot of time on the road. Let U.S. Rider help keep you covered. Our Equestrian Motor Plan offers fast, reliable, nationwide service from our highly trained roadside assistance team. 24-7 coverage for both you and your horse. Membership includes horse trailer servicing, towing, flat tire repair, even on dual wheels, battery assistance, and lockout service on any vehicle in your plan. We also have your equine companions covered with referrals for emergency vet services, barrier referrals, and emergency stabling assistance. Get peace of mind on the road for you and your horse. Join U.S. Rider today. And our next guest this morning is Morella Bolawa. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. She is a fitness coach, and she's going to be one of the clinicians speaking at the upcoming Northeast Endurance Team Challenge. And she is a a fitness coach and she also does assisted stretching and so we're going to talk about uh, rider fitness and uh, welcome good morning Marilla. hello karen thank you so much for inviting me to your show it's a pleasure to join you today oh thank you so uh, tell us how did you get started with becoming a personal trainer and a nutrition coach and all the work that you're doing um it happened like over time i started to take care of my own uh, health because on the beginning i was not quite sure what i was doing so i started to learn more and then i decided to make it my career because i really like to help people get stronger get healthier it's so important and that benefits you for years without 
using different things like medicine and I mean uh, you see and I just ah uh, <laughs> no you're I doing good for this. <laughs> okay you're doing good I did not expect this question <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's go on. Why is it important for a writer to exercise as part of their writing routine? So writing, especially a competitive in competitive environment, is a teamwork between the rider and the horse. Um, they both need a good stamina, especially during endurance ride, because they spend uh, riders spend hours in the saddle. Um, so sometimes what can happen is... Um, they are imbalanced in the saddle or they have asymm uh, asymmetrical position that could definitely um, affect their performance. It's That's why it's crucial to stay physically fit because that can actually help both the rider and the horse. Okay. And are there any things you would advise a rider, especially especially those of us that are getting older. Of course, everybody's getting older, but some of us, a lot of endurance riders are senior citizens. What advice do you have for them for staying physically fit? So definitely physically fit rider can do the better, can do better job and they can help horse, uh, perform better. Anyone can exercise. There is no age limit on exercising. I usually try to encourage small kids and then they carry it through the life. And especially when senior citizens or uh, older people, they should exercise the most just because they lose dense density of their bones and they um, lose balance sometimes. So it's really, really important to stay fit not just as a rider, but as a person on for regular, like regular life and daily um, activities. And what can we do to improve our balance? Uh, basically, just try to exercise, use exercises which can improve balance, like even as simple as standing on one leg while doing dishes or something like this. Because the more you're going to teach your body uh, how to stay in correct balance, the better it will be for the future. And it's all muscle memory. So your body will respond at some point without you even thinking. So if you slip on the ice, it will be much easier to recover. You might not even fall or the fall will be totally different if you're not going to exercise at all and, and uh, work on your balance through your, it should be mm -hmm. through your whole life, but in older age, especially, yes. Right, right. Well, let's talk about stretching. What advice do you have there? So I uh, do assisted stretching, and it's so beneficial, especially for older generation, but for everyone, like even I, I stretch all the way from like nine years old to 81. My oldest client is 81, and it's so beneficial because it helps you with um, flexibility, and it also prevents injuries um, for like riders it definitely shortens the post ride recovery time so your muscles have time to relax stretch and um, whatever we are doing during the life your muscles tend to tense and mm -hmm. without stretching we usually don't spend time on stretching if people even when the when people exercise they usually skip the stretching part but that's so crucial for your muscles on the beginning to relax them and stretch before the workout and at the end after cool down to relax them after this hard work that they had to do during the exercising. And what is the difference between assisted stretching versus not assisted? Um, so I help people to stretch. I put their leg or hand into the posi position and then gently push until they feel the stretch. Then they uh, push against me to add a uh, tension and then we can push a little bit more. Usually you are not able to push yourself to the point where I can help people get into the stretch and also um, some positions it's really hard to, to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay and so I see in um, 
one of your outlines I read, you you were talking about a strong core. And so can you kind of walk us through some of the exercises and explain them that are um, going to benefit um, strengthening our core? So core, it's really important because it helps you with uh, keeping your correct posture, especially for the riders when they spend hours in the saddle. Strong core also can help riders to uh, to control horse during different man- maneuvers. That also benefits both. Um, it helps you on a regular basis, even when you bend, when you walk, when you sit. Then you don't have those imbalances in your body, so many imbalances in your body, because usually we have tendency to lean to one side or the other. If you sit, if you walk, if you stand, with strong core, everything holds you together, and <clears throat> that definitely helps in regular during regular life. Okay, so let's maybe I'll just ask you one at a time to to explain these exercises. So let's start with planks. Describe what planks are. Plank it's a full body exercise. You use basically each and every muscle in your body. Uh, you're going to lay down on the floor, then you're going to lift yourself on your forearms and your toes. Those are the only two points that touch the floor. This forces your abs to be really tight, so you can lift your body. If you're going to go too high or dip too low, you're going to put too much pressure on your lower back. So you want to be straight as a plank. That's why the name of the plank. Okay. Um, But best. Mm -hmm. Basically, all the muscles are working, and it's a very good core exercise. And for how long should we try to do those? So you try to go as long as you can without compromising your posture. Some people can start with just a few seconds, or even they cannot lift themselves. They have to work on lifting their body up. Some people can hold it for minutes. 10, 15, 20 minutes. Okay. But it comes with time. So you have to listen to your body and start slow. And then as you progress, you're going to feel the difference and you're just going to feel that you can hold it more longer for a longer period of time. Okay. And what are bicycle crunches? You lay down on the on your back and you basically touch your elbow to your knee, opposite elbow to opposite knee, This, again, works your whole core, your whole abs and obliques because you twist from one side to the other. That's another really, really good ab exercise. Okay. And what about glute kicks? What are those? Glute kicks, you're going to be on your knees and your hands are on the floor as well. You lift your one leg up and basically you're thinking like you want to kick the ceiling. That activates glutes. Many times in our society, we sit a lot and our glutes inactivate themselves. Even with walking, it's not, they don't reactivate. You have to have like certain exercises or running that pushes your glutes to to be active again. So as many exercises for glutes, the better. Okay. And what is the Spider-Man? Spider-Man is uh, Superman, actually. It's uh, you lay on your on your belly and lift your legs and hands up. That's awesome exercise for lower back, glutes again, and your abs because you have to squeeze those abs to lift your hands and legs. Otherwise, you are again pu- putting too much pressure on your lower back. Okay, and what's your recommendation overall? Say um, during the week, how many minutes should we try to do some of these exercises? The best it would be if we could exercise daily about 20 to 30 minutes. But we know that life happens. So as long as we exercise twice or three times a week for any time between uh, half half an hour to an hour, that should be okay. The more the better, but the minimum, bare minimum, it's two, three times. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And uh, what is your website? My website is www.stayfitbestrong.com, and it's the same for the Facebook page. Stay fit, be strong. Okay, well, good talking with you this morning, Morella, and thank you for joining us and sharing your 
insights on this important topic. Thank you so much. For first-time horse owners and new riders, finding the information and support you need can be challenging. That's why Equine Network has partnered with Sentinel and Absorbing to bring you My New Horse. From important horsekeeping information and how-to videos to social media communities, exclusive experiences, and more, My New Horse is your one-stop shop for riders of all levels and disciplines looking for easy-to-understand horse care information and guidance. Start your horse ownership journey today. Visit MyNewHorse.com. Our next guest this morning is Holly Corcoran, and she's been on the show once before. We talked about her horses, and today she's joining us to tell us about the North American Team Challenge that's coming up in June. Holly has been riding endurance for over 20 years, and she's got over 7,600 miles. Welcome, Holly. How are you today? I'm really good. Thanks for having me. Good. Thanks. I'm so glad you could make it. And um, I'm looking forward to learning about this Northeast Endurance Team Challenge. Hopefully I got the whole name correct. I know yep. it's a really big deal. It's got AARC rides, FVI rides, AHA championships, and breed recognitions. There's teams and there's clinicians and all sorts of stuff going on. So uh, give us a rundown on this event. When is it? Where is it? Okay. I'm happy to do it. Um, we're really excited because we actually started the planning for this about two years ago, and we are hosting it at Bear Hill International in Elkton, Maryland on June 20th to the 23rd. Uh, the clinics will run from 8 a.m. on Thursday the 20th until noon on Friday, and then in the afternoon we have vet-ins We have our teams that will hopefully all be vetting in together with their horses. And then right after that, we have photos taken by uh, Becky Pierman Photography, uh, which will be part of the awards that uh, the teams will receive. And then on Saturday, the 22nd, um, all of the horses step the line for 25, 50, 65, 75, and 100 mile rides in addition to the FEI one through three stars. So we're really excited about it. Wow. That's a, I'm sure this has taken a lot of organization and planning for all of those distances and all of the stuff that's going on. Yeah, it definitely takes a community. We have um, three of us that are really the major planners. So Holly McDonald is our wonderful ride manager who has run rides at Fair Hill before. So she's kind of uh, working uh, more on the ride side of it. And then Heather Davis and I have been working on the clinics and coordinating the teams and getting the awards. And we have had an amazing outflow of sponsorships and awards. And we have some just fantastic prizes that are coming from saddles and bridles and uh, gift certificates from different companies and products. Oh, it's just amazing. We're really excited. And we're also going to have some really great vendors there who will be on site, um, you know, selling to whoever comes by. We're also hoping to have the general club public, such as um, 4-H and Pony Club and some people who are new to endurance come and find out all about it. So I've got questions. Having ridden at Fairhill a few times when I lived up there, are you going uh-huh. to be, for the ride, are you going to be using the, let me think of, get my, me, my directions correctly, the western part of the facility because it's 4,000 acres or the eastern part where they have the new five star? Actually, um, there is four quadrants to Fairhill International and we're using all four. Wow. Um, so our trails will be all over, especially to come up with, you know, a hundred miles worth of trail where we're not doing a whole lot of repeat. So you've got really big loops. So you're just not going around a little teeny, you know, one no, mile absolutely. circles. Like the, yeah. Oh, the that's first great. On the 60, on the 65, 75 and hundred is going to be 40 kilometers, which is 32 miles. And it will have a break, a 10 minute break in the middle um, to just, you know, recollect your horse and then go back out. And for somebody who's not familiar with the area, Fair Hill, uh, the facility Fair Hill, is a park. I guess you can call it a park. What's the terrain like there for somebody who's not familiar? Oh, um, yeah, it is 
really rolling. It can be somewhat technical and uh, the rolling hills can be sometimes more of a challenge to the horses than straight up and down. Um, it's got grassy areas. Uh, so, and there can be single track and mud and rocks and stream crossings and things like that. So it's got a lot of different terrain. Uh, one of the things that I suggest is I actually ride with uh, pads in the front because sometimes we're on the roads and that will have small gravel on it as well. So lots of different things that we're um, slated to expect. Are you are any of the, you might not know this yet, but are, are any of the trails going to go across the bridges that go across that main road that divides up the p- facility? Yeah, actually they have devised the trail and I believe some of them will be going over the trails to be able to connect everything. Because I know in the past we've gone through the tunnel, we've gone over the bridges. So I think it's going to be pretty similar. Okay, and one one final question about Fair Hill. Will anybody <laughs> notice if someone just happens to go a little bit off the trail and happen to hop over any of the five star cross country jumps? <laughs> I don't know. This I is hypothetical. Know. I don't know why that. <laughs> For our endurance courses, I'm sorry, I'm not taking the chance because they spook and I do it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and and where where are the going the camping facilities going to be? Where's everybody going to camp? Well, um, we're really excited about that because for um, Foxcatcher, we 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 camp at uh, Gallagher Gallagher um, Field, but we're actually going to have that field ac- and across the road where the dressage arenas and uh, large arenas owned by Fairhill International are, because we're going to be hosting our. Uh, dressage for endurance riders clinic in that that runs from 8 a.m. on Thursday to noon on Friday. We have a um, gold medalist dressage instructor, uh, Greta Wrigley, who has worked with a lot of endurance riders, and she's going to be sharing her knowledge in the clinics there. But we're going to have that whole two sides of the road to be able to spread out, have our vendors, have our crewing area, and so forth. And then also, if anybody's interested, there are barns available um, along with um, hookup uh, uh, RV camping that's about a mile away from ride site. Perfect. Thanks again, Holly, for joining us. So if anybody wants to check out what's coming up in the Endurance Universe, where are they going to go? AERC.org. For people who want to follow along with your adventures online, where can they do that? Um, NVEndurancewriter.com. NV blog. as in Nevada. Uh-huh. Endurancewriter.com. And for anybody who wants to ask Karen, a question regarding endurance or any other horse topic, or for that matter, travel topic, because you have a lot of traveling with horses miles under your belt. You mm-hmm. can just drop me an email at jennifer at horseradionetwork.com and uh, maybe we'll answer it on next month's show. That's right. And to finish yeah. is to win. There we go. And thanks to our sponsor, The Distance Depot. We couldn't do these shows without our sponsors. And if you have a product or a service, that the equestrian community and particularly maybe the endurance community needs to know about, you can contact Horse Radio Network today and find out about advertising opportunities on this and other podcasts. So all you do is go to horseradionetwork.com and click on the contact button. And we'll see you again next month, Karen. 